Hi everyone, I never know where to look on this um, camera. Do I look that way or that way? Oh, I'm useless. So I've been abandoning physics and I've been feeling really guilty about it and that's because it's just far more straightforward filming biology and chemistry videos. But enough is enough and I'm gonna tackle physics. Um, the reason why it's so difficult to film videos is because the physics involves a huge amount of calculations. So I thought the best thing to do would be to film this introduction to explain that I'm actually going to be using my iPad and explain everything to talk through a huge selection of questions. Because the maths element of physics kind of is found everywhere within the physics syllabus, so we're talking about equations used in electricity to do with resistance, current and voltage for example, you're talking about equations used in um, energy to kinetic energy, gravitational potential energy, work done calculations, obviously equations linking weight with mass and gravity, um, moving on to momentum, so many equations. Density, there's another one. So what I thought I would do is just get a huge section of questions up on my iPad and just kind of plough through them and show you how to think about it. What I would say though with physics, it obviously depends on your exam board, but it's super important that you learn um, the equations if you're not given the equation sheets and the best way of doing that is to draw physics triangles because obviously then in that case you have a triangle which gives you all three equations rather than having to learn them all separately because by the time you've learned all the equations you're going to be in such a mess because there's so many of them and it's good to remember clever ways of memorizing them so for example um, DMV that's obviously density equals mass divided by volume the way to remember that is drunk men vomit with D at the bottom and that's how I remember things like that, even though that sounds pretty horrible. Why am I wriggling all over the place with this? Anyway, so like I said, I'm just going to dive into doing some equations and hopefully you'll find it helpful. And um, yeah, see how it goes. An empty beaker with a mass of 50 grams was placed on a balance and 100 centimetres cubed of liquid was poured into a measuring cylinder. When all the liquid is poured into the beaker, the balance reading changes to 140 grams. Calculate the density. So you'll need this formula triangle, which is D, M, V, and one of my tutees told me the best way of remembering this is drunk man vomit. Horrible, but a good way of remembering it. Therefore, density equals mass divided by volume. Make sure you've read the question properly. The mass of the beaker is 50 grams, and the total mass of the beaker and the liquid is 140. So therefore, the mass of the liquid must be 90, because that's the difference between the two numbers. We're dividing it by 100, as that's the volume given, to give us 0 0.9. First question done. Write down the equation which links work done, force and distance. So write the formula triangle on the back of page of your exam paper so it doesn't get in the way and write down what you know. So that's work done, force and distance. Because remember, you can't provide that triangle as the answer. You actually have to write it out. And I recommend you writing it out in full to avoid mistakes because there are very specific symbols for the words. So for example, if you're talking about electricity, you have to write I instead of C, which is a bit of a hard thing to remember in an exam situation. But there's the equation, work done equals force times distance. Question three, what energy is required to move an object if the force is 14.21 newtons and the distance moved is 2.3 meters? Remember that work done and energy are the same thing because they have the same units, which is joules. So you can use that equation we've just written. So work done equals force times distance. Force is 14.21 times distance, which is 2.3. I'm running out of space, so I'm going to do the terrible thing of writing two equal signs on the same line. I'm going to use my calculator because I definitely can't do that in my head to get the answer of 32.683. I'm going to round to three significant figures, um, which is always a good bet, but obviously follow the instructions in the exam. Why am I writing 32.6? That's not the answer. To three sig figures, obviously 32.7, and the units are joules. Right, let's hope I don't mess up scrolling down. So I need to get rid of that so I can then move the page down. Please work. Yay, it worked. So question four, in a race a cyclist travels 50 times around a 3.2 kilometer racetrack. It takes them 3.1 hours. What is the average speed of the cyclist? So here's our formula triangle this time, which is D, S and T. So the speed is therefore D divided by T. What is D? Well, it's 50 lots of 3.2 because he cycled around the track 50 times. So that is therefore 160 divided by time, which is 3.1. And you really need to keep an eye on units of this question, but luckily it hasn't specified units, so I'm going to keep it all the same. 
and I've divided it by 3.1 to get an answer which is 51.6 significant figures. Because it's a speed, it needs to be kilometres per hour, as that's what was given in the question, but obviously in another question it might be something like metres per second, so watch out for that. Question 5. There were four beakers. I'm not actually going to read that out because that will take me too long, but obviously make sure you read the question properly. Which beaker contains the largest volume? So I just need to multiply these numbers together to work out the volume. So beaker A has a volume of 60 centimetres cubed. Beaker B has a volume of 80 centimetres cubed. Beaker C has a volume of 90 centimetres cubed. And finally D has a volume of 80 centimetres cubed. So therefore... Beaker C has the largest volume. So let's write it out nicely there. Okay, calculate the velocity of a bus travelling through town with a mass of 5040 kilograms and kinetic energy of 493900 joules. Why did I just read it like that? I must be going crazy. I'm very tired. Right, so our equation this time is kinetic energy equals, this is a tricky one, half of mv squared. So let's, this is basic maths now. It's not that basic. I don't know why I said basic. I just mean it's maths. So just substitute in the values you've been given. Half times 5040 times it by v squared. So let's work out those numbers. It's going to be 493900. And then I'm going to get rid of the half by doing 0.5 times 5040 to get 2520. B squared. How do you get rid of the 2520? Well, if it's multiplied on the right-hand side, you need to divide both sides by 2520. So I'm going to do that now. To get, I'm going to have to write over here because I'm running out of space. And that's what equals V squared. And then obviously to take the squared away from it, we need to square root both sides. So V will equal... Okay, it's come out as 13.999, so to three significant figures, that'll actually be 14.0. Let's check the units. Well, it's going to actually be um, metres per second. Although, why can I assume that when it hasn't mentioned anything else? Hmm, I'm not sure I can assume that, but in science, metres per second is the unit you need to use generally for speed, so I'm actually going to keep it like that. Okay, moving on get rid of all this text again. I'm being really slow, I'm sorry. Okay, that's gone. Great. Okay, moving down again. Or move to the next slide, so why did I just waste all that time? Question 8. A car travels from one town to a neighbouring town. The car reaches a top speed of 80 km per hour, but its average speed between the towns is only 70 km per hour. The journey between the towns takes 20 minutes to calculate the distance between the towns, so using this triangle again. So distance equals speed times time. Right, we've got some issues here with units because we have kilometers per hour as the speed, but actually time as um, minutes. It's up to you which way you want to change them, but for me, I feel like the easiest thing here will be to change the minutes into hours. So. The speed is going to be 70 because we've been told that's the average speed. So I'm going to write 70 there times the time. I can't write 20 because that will screw up everything. So I need to do a calculation. Remember to convert minutes into hours. You need to divide by 60. So that's what I'm going to do. And that's going to be a third. So I'm going to times it by a third because that's a third of an hour. And I'm going to get an answer of, by the time I've times it by 70, 23.3. Kilometers. So there's the answer. B. How long would the journey take be between the two towns if the car could maintain a constant speed of 80 kilometers per hour? So how long is a time value? I'm going to look at my formula triangle and time is calculated by doing distance divided by speed. I just worked out that the distance is 23.3 kilometers away. The speed we've been told is 80. So let's just divide this together. And the answer is... 0 0.2916, so that's 0 0.29 hours. And just to show that you can convert that into minutes, times it by 60 to get 17.5 minutes. So that's how long it would take. Make sure that your answer is sensible. 
Well, it's taken 17.5 minutes when it's going faster, which is what you'd expect because it took 20 minutes when the car was averaging 70 kilometers per hour. Right, the speed was of the lorry was 80 kilometers per hour. What is its speed in meters per second? So convert these in two stages. First of all, convert the kilometers to meters. And remember, there's a 1,000 meters in a kilometer. So that's now 80,000 meters per hour. However, we want to know how fast it's going in a second effectively. So this will seem opposite to what you might think, but you, what you need to do is you need to divide it by 60 twice in order to convert it into how fast it'd be traveling per second. And the answer is 22.2 meters per second, which again is sensible. Right, let's get rid again. Hopefully I'll do it faster this time. Yes, that was better. No, what did I do? Cool. Oh, oh, sorry. Right, what is the equation for calculating acceleration? So acceleration equals, and I always put it this way because it's the best way of doing your calculations rather than writing change in speed, final speed minus initial speed, oh I'm running out of space and my handwriting is terrible, divided by time, done. A car starts at 60 km per hour and increases its speed to 80 km per hour, this increase in speed takes 2 minutes, find its acceleration in metres per hour, so it's being really really fussy here about units so what is the change in speed well it's the final speed minus the initial speed so that is 20 kilometers per hour let's double check what it wants the answers to be and it wants it to be in meters per hour so i need to times it by a thousand in order to convert it so that will be now twenty thousand meters per hour <clears throat> got a dog in my throat so that unit's okay. This increase in speed takes two minutes to find its acceleration meters per hour. So we need to convert the two minutes into hour into hours. Does that even make sense the way I'm saying it? So you need to divide it by 60 to get 0 0.03 recurring. Okay, now we're ready to use the equation. So acceleration equals final speed minus initial speed, which we've already worked out is 20,000. Divide it by the time, which is 0 0.03. And we get this number. Um, which is meters per hour. Cool. That sounds like a crazy number. Anyway, let's now move on again. So calculate the mass of an automatic door closing at 0.2 meters per second with a kinetic energy of 1.6 joules. So we're using this equation again, which is k equals half of mv squared. I do think the hardest thing about physics is all the jumping around between the topics. It does actually make it really difficult. Right, we've been told that the kinetic energy is 1.6. And we've got half, and then we're trying to find the mass. And we've been told that the speed is 0.02. And we've got to square that according to the equation. So in order to sort this out, I'm going to first of all square this 0 0.2. Then I'm going to halve it to get rid of that half. So it therefore becomes 1.6 equals 0 0.02m. And then we need to divide both sides by 0 0.02 to get m by itself. So 1.6 divided by that number is 80. So the mass is 80 kilograms. Cool, done. Okay, are we nearly there? Right, on to the next slide. Why do I never learn? Oh, I think it's the last question, amazing. So calculate the mass of a wind turbine with kinetic energy of, I'm so bad at saying numbers, so I'm not gonna say that number, turning at six meters per second. Right, again, that is really similar to the question before. So I'm just gonna write the formula. I'm going to write out this long number, which I'm not going to say, and half of mass times 6 squared. Let's do it exactly the same as before. Look at me taking up so much space, being crazy. So 6 squared is 36, divided by 2 is 18, so 18m. You need to divide both sides by 18 to get m by itself. I think I keep going up when I talk, it's really strange. I'll stop doing that. Divided by 18. Yay, and that's a nice number, so I'm kind of convinced I'm right. 
which is 5,780 kilograms. Whoop. Okay, really long video, but I hope you found it helpful. Let me know if you want me to record more videos like this, and I'll see you next time.